Hi, my name is Dietmar Hörtecke and I'm a professor of physics education at the Department of Education at Hamburg University. I would like to briefly introduce myself to you and let you know a little bit more about my research interests in the field of language, diversity and education. I earned my PhD two decades ago at University of Oldenburg in Germany. During my research career, I became more and more aware of the fact how closely language and learning are related to each other. This is why I directed my research focus more and more on this issue. There are really good reasons to do more research in this field. In Germany, we have people from about 200 countries from all over the world. For instance, in Hamburg, which is my hometown, students at school bring about a hundred different first languages. About one third of the students speaks at least one additional language next to German, and this rate is even higher in urban areas like Hamburg, Berlin or Munich. As a consequence, our educational system has to be concerned with the fact that students in our schools have a quite wide variety of different languages on their disposal. On the other hand, studies again and again have shown that competencies in the teaching language, which is usually in German, is usually German, is shown to be an important predictor of success in, in mathematics as well as in science. This is too quick. This is actually not really surprising if we keep in mind the manifold demands students have to meet and which are all concerned with language. Language seems to play a pivotal role in science teaching and learning. We know manifold demands in science education which are related to or even caused by language. Among them are that students are interacting with each other during instruction. They are obtaining and understanding and processing information in science. They are reflecting structuring, adapting and broadening their own knowledge and understanding. They are making and describing observations and predictions. They are drawing conclusions. They are presenting and discussing results and experiences. They are reflecting their own activities and procedures while doing science. They are reading, understanding or writing texts. They are reading, understanding or solving test items. All these activities are challenging for students because they are linguistically demanding. As a medium of learning, students are reflecting and developing their own understanding towards a more scientific understanding of particular concepts in science. Therefore, language is a prerequisite of successful teaching and learning science. If so, learning the language of schooling is not just a matter of the language related subjects like German or English, but all subjects including physics have to support the development of students language capabilities. In my group, we are conducting a couple of projects which are all concerned with the role of language and teaching and learning physics. Markus, for instance, has conducted a very nice project which he finished recently. He has explored physics teachers assessment practices and did research on the problem to which degree and in which ways physics teachers are considering language capabilities of their students when assessing their students' work. He, for instance, found out that teachers in his study tended to take a deficit perspective when considering students' language. 
Furthermore, he could show how a judgment about competency in physics might be affected by students' language competencies. Nile, in her ongoing project, is concerned with the multilingual students in physics. Since research has indicated rather positive effects of using multilinguistic resources during instruction, she is exploring the perspectives of these multilingual students on their language use during physics instruction. Nadia instead is focusing pre-service physics teachers and their perspectives on the role of language and linguistic diversity in physics instruction. Timo and Karina, on the other hand, draw their attention to something different. Both are concerned with linguistic complexity and how it might affect students' learning and understanding in physics. For this purpose, Timo developed a couple of texts for teaching and learning thermodynamics, <clears throat> quite similar to texts in physics textbooks. His central idea is to vary the linguistic complexity of each of his texts. In his main study, each of the texts presented to students it will be presented to the students, and the students were asked afterwards a couple of questions about the text. Timo's expectation is that the variation of linguistic complexities on three levels of a text affects students' understanding. Karina, on the other hand, works in a rather similar design, but with her concern is about test items. Her project is coordinated with a parallel project in mathematics education. Finally, I would like to proudly mention a project I have successfully, successfully applied for together with Ingrid Kogolin. In this project, it is planned to conduct an experimental study in physics teaching about the role of language sensitive teaching on the one hand and multilinguism on the other. We are expecting positive effects of both. Our research in my group here is based on a broad variety of empirical methods. While Marcus, for example, has based his research on a mixed method approach, Neil and Nadia both conducted interviews either with single persons or with groups. These two young researchers both apply the method of so-called documentary method, which is based on a sociological approach. Timo and Karina, on the other hand, are both working with statistical data and their analysis based on probabilistic models of their data. I hope you have had the chance to develop an idea of the research we are conducting in my group and how we are puzzled with the relation of language and learning. I'm looking very forward to meet you in person at the Hamburg International Summer School 2021, devoted to linguistic diversity, education and social participation. My plan is to bring not only results from our ongoing and recent projects, moreover, I would like you to discuss our research together with me and the members of my group and work, work on our data collaboratively. You will be more than welcome. Until then, I say goodbye with an evening impression of the Hamburg Harbor and the Elbe Beach and hope that we can soon enjoy this perspective together. So long.